McAllister's is the official healthy choice option of Saluki Athletics. Consider your last-minute meetings, get-togethers, and celebrations handled because McAllister's brings their best to every event. From delivery and setup to big appetites and the smallest details, McAllister's has you covered. Go to McAllister'sDeli.com backslash catering and let's stay connected. I'm your host, Connor Onion. Welcome back to another Saluki Standards podcast. We're going out to Itchy Jones Stadium once again, talking some Saluki baseball. They're 11-0. They're ranked. They're tied for the best start in program history in the first full year under head coach Lance Rhodes. And Tristan Peters was just named the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week. Uh, Peters is killing it really in all phases at the plate. 467 batting average. He was 10 for 15 last week in a midweek win over Western Illinois, then the sweep of UT Martin. And he's the second Saluki to get Player of the Week honors. It was Phil Archer uh, before him. So Tristan Peters, he's from Canada, went to Chandler Gilbert Community College out in Arizona, and now he finds himself playing center field for SIU. Hope you enjoy our conversation with Saluki Baseball's Tristan Peters. How much fun are you having right now with the hot start for you guys? Oh, I'm having a great time. It, it's nice to win all the time. That's for sure. I'm not familiar with this feeling, but it's good to be here now. So hopefully we can keep it going. Yeah, I heard you say that after the game the other day, just that, uh, you know, this is this is kind of new, all this winning yeah. for you. Um, it, it, have, have you not uh, experienced this level of success uh, on the teams you've been on in the past before? Uh, back in high school, I'd say we had a really good team too. We never went undefeated like this and it wasn't obviously as high of a level but back in junior college it wasn't quite we weren't we didn't tend to win a lot we would always have like on and off we'd win and then we'd lose and I mean it's nice to win all the time (laughs) yeah yeah I'll say for sure and also some some personal accolades that have gone with that you were the Missouri Valley player of the week this week um you know, big week at the plate, 10 for 15, you know, you're hitting 467 overall. So a lot of good things there. Uh, that would suggest that D1 balls kind of been easy for you so far. Would you say it's, <laughs> would you say it's been easy for you at this point? Oh, I wish it felt easy. I mean, it's baseball's never easy or it never feels easy anyway. Some people make it look easy, but I mean, it's fun competing and playing this well, but in baseball, especially you get the, these hot streaks and then you get the cold streaks too. And and then you just got to work hard to stay hot as well. So that's where I'm at right now. Why do you think it has clicked so early for you playing D one ball? Um, I feel like we scrimmaged a lot in the fall and even before our season started. And I think that helped a lot. We saw our pitchers, we saw, and cause we have a really good pitching staff too. So, um, yeah. And that's really helped us. And I've learned a lot from some of the older players, like, about the mental aspect of the game, especially from Nick Neville. He's been a huge help with me in the mental side of the game. So that's been awesome. Yeah. What's something uh, specific Nick has shared with you? I know he's been in a lot of, you know, a lot of cool places playing at the high major level. And, um, you know, obviously he's, he's done pretty well for himself at the plate too. Mm-hmm. He's just shared. I mean, he's had so many experiences and he's just shared some of them with me. One thing he really, that really stood out to me was confidence. And he told me that he has confidence in everything he does and not just in baseball. He said that he wakes up confident. And I was like, that really clicked for me. And I was like, I need to, I need to start being confident throughout the day, not just while I'm at the plate, not just while I'm in center field. And that, that was really good advice. And it's really stuck with me so so do you wake up and remind yourself now yeah that... sometimes sometimes i forget i'm not perfect that's for sure but i'm, I'm doing better yeah is that natural for you are you are you naturally a confident guy oh i i can't say so no but i i've greatly improved especially since high school i like when i'm on my cold streaks it's definitely because of a lack of confidence i'd say because i like I kind of, I'm really hard on myself sometimes. I'm trying really hard not to be too get too down or whatever. So the Nick has been right by my side, helping me with that and with confidence. And it's been awesome. When, when things are going well too, I, I feel like people, I don't know if this is the case with you, but people that are maybe naturally humble, um, don't want to get overly confident. Uh, do you, do you fit into that category? 
Uh, I, I guess you could say so. I mean, I definitely feel when I'm doing well, I definitely feel more confident and more giddy and stuff. And like, I mean, uh, I try to stay as humble as possible. And just cause I know at any point it like I can get humbled by the game very quickly. That's what baseball does. So mm -hmm. when you were, you were talking about going back to the fall, and uh, seeing some of your own pitchers in the scrimmages, you know, how did you do in some of those early at bats seeing D1 pitching for the first time? Oh man, uh, my fall was not great hitting wise and stuff. And I just, I honestly just didn't feel as good during the fall as I do now after the break. I got really in good shape over the break. And I think that helped me a lot too physically. But um, I mean, I did, I think I got better as we went because I, we saw our pitchers so often like we'd scrimmage a lot and so yeah just seeing that amount of pitching really it boosts your confidence too once you start hitting well off of them and yeah just goes up from there when was the launching point was it a moment here in the spring or did you have kind of a, a breakthrough moment in the fall beforehand uh I think it was more so in the spring I mean I didn't end off the fall terrible but then after the break, I got my body in the right place. And then, um, and then I, I just started hitting really good from the beginning of our spring scrimmages and toward till the end. And then I think it's kind of transferring into games now. So what tweaks have you made, uh, swing wise, whether it was from Juco into the fall or the fall into the spring here? Um, I wouldn't really say there was much physical tweaks. I tried to most I did probably was staying on my backside to, so I wouldn't roll over to the second baseman as much. And I've done a lot better than I've probably ever done in my life with that. Cause I tend to, I t used to roll over. I get my base hits in that hole, but a lot of the time I get out too, but this year I've been staying through the middle. So that's basically the only thing with my swing physically anyway. <laughs> Who do you like to model yourself after offensively? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I know as I was growing up, I did a lot of hitting with my uh, dad. He taught me a lot. And we always modeled it off of, we'd watch video of Albert Pujols. And I, my changes, or my swing has changed kind of from there. Like I used to not have a toe tap like I do. So now I'm moving my, my body's moving a little more. So it doesn't look quite as much as Pujols, but I'd say that's who I modeled it after mostly something uh something about the lefties on this team man i remember talking to to evan martin in the summer and he was telling me the same thing so pujols is uh is mm -hmm. he's got a big imprint on saluki baseball yeah he's a good one <laughs> i'll ask you the same question i asked evan how, you know how transferable are some of those things from the opposite side of the plate of albert pujols um i think i mean if you just flip the video you can see him basically batting left-handed and that's what we did or that's what I did with my dad. And so, I, I mean, it's essentially righties swing the exact same as lefties. It's just from the other side. And so, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about being from Canada and this, I guess this was kind of the opening talking about hitting, but uh, you know, a lot of good left-handed hitters that have gone to the big leagues from Canada, thinking about Joey Votto and mm -hmm. Justin Morneau. Uh, mm -hmm. How much of, of those guys have you tried to steal from? honestly i haven't looked at them a whole lot i've yeah i i can't say i've looked at them at all but pools is like the most looked at there was i like to look at judge as well so now not really canadians i guess so. <laughs> oh yeah i i hear you. and not not really lefties it sounds like no i didn't even think of that <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about judge what what elements of judge's swing are in your swing Oh, I don't, I don't know if I have anything from his swing specifically. I just like the way he carries himself. So I like watching like the way he hits home runs. I like how he just kind of acts like he's done it many times before, which he has. And I don't know. I just, I like his character for the most part. So that's why I try to model my character around. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fight the urge. I'm sure anybody that knows you're from Canada, ask you, Oh, do you play hockey? Um, but <laughs> what, what, what got you into baseball? Uh, I've been playing it since I was four years old. I played T-ball and then just moved up from there. And then eventually this, so there's this in Canada, high school baseball just isn't really great. 
So I moved on. So I moved out at 16 to go to an academy. It's called Oak Tokes Dogs Academy. And I played my last two years of high school there. And uh, so, yeah, I've been playing for a long time. And then that's how I got my exposure to go to Chandler Gilbert in Arizona. And now I'm here. What did, uh, what did mom and dad think about that? You moving out at 16? They, they were all for it. Honestly, like I was, the, I was the one kind of like, I don't know if I want to, but they, my dad, especially he pushed me and it ended up being a great thing. So was that hard? Were you homesick? Uh, I mean, at some points I was, but the great thing was I lived with my aunt in Calgary, Alberta. And so that really helped a lot. And it kind of like just slowly transferred me into being able to live alone. So, yeah. Just, just thinking about the climate up there. Um, you, you can't play all year round. Um, what was competition like and, and how many people do pick up on baseball that were around your age? Oh, uh, it's been growing in my hometown. I was from a small hometown, so there was not a lot of people, not near, it's nothing like the U S like, but and then once I moved, there was a lot more people playing around there. But, I mean, not being able to play all year, it's just not as in, uh, as like uh, enticing to other people. So they get more into hockey and all that stuff. But I'd say pretty good, like, you'd be surprised how many people back in Canada would play baseball. So it's good to see. Was there poll for you to – try out some of the outdoor sports or, or some of the more mainstream Canadian sports? Well, I played hockey until my sophomore year of high school too, before I moved. So I played, I played like all the sports too. So up until my junior year of high school. So yeah, I've, I've done it all. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, I was resisting that urge to ask you that question, assuming that you're a baseball guy through and through, but uh, what, yeah. what kind of hockey player were you? Uh, I like to think I was a really good hockey player. I mean, I'd get, I wasn't the biggest kid on the ice, so I'd get hit around a lot, which was kind of the, the, the negative part of hockey. Cause you get injured so much. I think I had three concussions and a separated shoulder and a broken arm. So, mm. but I mean, I, I played well, I scored goals and stuff, but they, yeah, baseball just was more exciting for me. <laughs> broken throwing arm from hockey. No, it was my left arm, so my catching arm, so it wasn't too big of a deal. <laughs> okay, so that that didn't mess up any. Well, no. I guess I guess hitting wise, would have taken you yeah. out for a while. Yeah, I'd. Uh, it was during the winter, so we couldn't even play baseball. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so you didn't have much access to like indoor facilities or anything like that to play in the winter. No, we'd go to like school gyms to throw around. Sometimes it wasn't like every day or anything. And then once I moved to Oak Tokes, the Dogs Academy, uh, we had a really nice indoor facility. So we were able to practice. It was like, it fit more than an infield in the whole building. And it was all turf and we could hit everywhere in there. And it was, so that helped a lot. Gave us a huge advantage, advantage in Canada. So. A quick break from our conversation with Tristan Peters. Bud Light has created a seltzer so satisfying it will have your taste buds going wild. Bud Light Seltzer is the official seltzer of Saluki Athletics. Now back to our conversation with Tristan Peters. So you've really only been playing year round since you were 16. So yeah. I guess probably a little bit behind some of the other guys you're playing with now, huh? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah it's crazy. <laughs> what, what do you feel like you're still naive to? Uh, in baseball since you haven't been playing it as long as some others that's a good question I haven't really thought of that I think uh, I don't really know I I think I'd, pr I'd pretty much be on the same level of like at now anyway I kind of we picked it up pretty fast once we were able to you know, I do it all year round but yeah I can't think of anything right now yeah um I guess that's kind of a silly question because if you're naive to it, then you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> so, point. <laughs> so I'm going to ask that question. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the, the better question would be since you're, you're doing it at the D one level. Now you've, you've come mm -hmm. to the States, you've done well for yourself. How do you feel like you've caught up since you, you picked up the game, you know, all year round a little bit later? Mm, I feel like I caught up pretty well. I, 
I, I look back on my high school year this year and I was like, wow, I've come a long way. And like, I can't even, I can't imagine. Or I, it's just weird to think about me in high school. I looked so small and didn't know nearly as much as I do now. And it just feels really cool. And I know there's a lot more to learn too. So that's exciting. How much have you shot up? Just like, weight, weight and weight and height wise. Height, I really haven't gained any height since high school. I just kind of looked a little smaller. I don't know. I And then I gained probably about 25 pounds since high school. So uh, around there fluctuates. <laughs> yeah. Added the beard to look a little older. Yeah, and then, yeah that helps a lot. <laughs> it makes me look older. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, you know, when – when, when you hear a player has come from junior college, I think the, like the convenient narrative is, you know, there must've been something wrong with that player, whether it was grades or they weren't good enough. Why, why did you go Juco at first before going D1? You know, um, I think it had to do mostly with me being in Canada and we just don't have as much exposure to high level schools like division one schools um there my high school is doing a lot better with that now now schools bigger schools are seeing them like Oregon State Tennessee and all those schools <clears throat> but and I also think it was I wasn't quite as developed which I think you could say is because I we, I didn't play a year round like my whole life so I wasn't as developed and junior college really helped me kind of find who or what kind of baseball player I am and really developed my skills to a higher level. And so I don't think I could have gone D1 at a high school and junior college really helped me get to this level. How many options did you have? Was it, was it just to go to Chandler or did you have some other schools looking at you? Yeah, I had, uh, I don't know the number. I know there was Wabash Valley, which is actually one of the top junior colleges right now. And then Chandler Gilbert and Mesa community college, which is another one in our, in the Arizona league. And then there was uh, Colby community college in Kansas. There were, there were some division twos that I was talking to as well. And, um, but those, then you uh, don't have like draft eligibility either in your first two years. So that's another good thing about junior college is you have draft eligibility through both those years. But yeah, so there was about five schools, I think, or six. How much feedback did you get that maybe you could be a draft guy out of JUCO? Uh, I actually, there was my first year, my freshman year, there wasn't a ton. And then my, there was a little bit. And then there were, and then my second year, there were teams started contacting me. Uh, the Cardinals contacted me or uh, they called me. They even called me on draft day. So that was really cool. And so almost got picked up and the, they were thinking the fifth round because it was only a five round draft, but but they ended up choosing a different guy. So, yeah. So, so COVID doesn't happen and it's still 40 rounds. You're gone. <laughs> yeah, that might have happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy to think about. So you could have been, you would have been maybe a sixth rounder. Yeah. The, the, they were saying if there were like 10 rounds, they probably would have done seventh to 10th round, but you never know either. It's they get, there's money and it's, it's a business. So right. I could never, tell you exactly where but yeah i mean i i gotta think that that was a little bit of a bummer uh i mean what, what level of disappointment was there uh i mean there was a little bit but i knew i was going to a good school i i had yeah so i was already set it's not like i didn't have anywhere to go after junior college so it wasn't really a huge disappointment i would i mean it, it's really just a privilege to get drafted at that point so that's how i looked at it Mm -hmm. And it was a privilege already to just be talked to and about the drafts. So. Yeah. Who, uh, who called you at the Cardinals? Was it, was it the GM or somebody in scouting or? Uh, yeah, it was just the Arizona area scout. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Did you, who'd yeah. you grow up rooting for? Uh, I'm a Yankees fan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You Not said, poop. Like <laughs> you said, you said Pujols earlier. I thought maybe you'd be drafted by yeah. your favorite team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, I've always liked the Yankees. I think it's because my dad hate, hates that team. And so I've kind of done that. I did the same thing with hockey. Toronto Maple Leafs, he likes the Jets, and he hates the Maple Leafs. So, <laughs> yeah. Contrarian. Contrarian. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like um, I feel like everybody's got a, a JUCO grind story. Uh, what was uh, what's what's your toughest JUCO grinded out moment or story that that you had? Man, that's tough because I was I was very fortunate. Our junior college was we were treated quite well for a JUCO. We had a nice gym and a nice field. We had the nicest field in the conference. But I mean, probably the most grinding thing was like mm, that's a tough question i mean we'd have to make our we'd have a bunch of our, our coach would buy us a bunch of groceries for our road games which we didn't even have long drives too which is not that thing like a lot of jucos have long drives and then that's they got a lot of stories with that but we'd have to make our own sandwiches and stuff but i mean it was awesome that we had our own food so that was really cool but yeah, we got treated well, honestly, for a Juco. <laughs> so you might make the meanest sandwich on the team then. <laughs> yeah. You, you got you got some life exactly. skills. Life yeah, skills. Exactly. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Um you're you're telling me that was a that's a wooden bat league out there in Arizona. Um, you know, what adjustments were there and uh using the wood bat and coming back to uh to the metal bats now. So there wasn't really an adjustment going to wood bat because uh, in Canada, we use wood bats throughout high school and through like basically our whole lives. And so I was used to it and I liked wood. I like wood still. And, but adjusting to metal was kind of interesting. I, especially since we had two piece bats this fall, it felt a lot different. And so, I mean, I got used to it pretty quick, honestly. And now I, yeah, it just feels natural. Yeah. is is there a big difference in pop can you feel it uh, there's definitely more room for error that's for sure like the sweet spot's bigger but i wouldn't say the ball goes for any further but you definitely get more of those jam shot hits and all that so so you said you didn't you didn't use uh metal at all in high school mm -mm. i mean we uh we would go to some u.s tournaments that's when we'd use metal, but even some of those tournaments were wood bat tournaments. So we used majority of wood. And yeah. when we used metal, we went off because we were just, yeah, we could hit with wood and other teams couldn't. <laughs> right. Right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, you, uh, you want a gold glove when, when you're in Juco, uh, also did well academically, uh, get into that in a minute, but I want to talk about your defense. We've, we've seen how you can be a difference maker out there in center field early in your time at SIU. What do you feel like makes you a, a great defender? Um, I'd say, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of fast. I'm not the fastest center fielder there's ever been or anything, but I, I really pride myself on getting good reads and that really helps. And then once I get going, I can really move. And so once, if I get a good read, I'll get that ball. So, yeah. I, I asked you about who you studied offensively. Are there guys that you study defensively? On a, uh, I never really did. No. Uh, yeah. I did, honestly didn't watch a lot of baseball growing up and I still don't I'm not. I like to play it rather than watch. <laughs> so, yeah. So see ball, get ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when did you realize you were, were a talented defender? Uh, probably my freshman year of junior college when I got that gold glove, especially after I got that gold glove, it really uh, reinforced my confidence in my fielding abilities. And the interesting thing was I hadn't played outfield until I think my senior year of high school. And then I played left field, not even center field. And then I tried to go back to the infield um, in my G or my freshman year at JUCO, but they moved me into the outfield just because we didn't have enough outfielders. So I've been there ever since. <laughs> so you're a gold glover by mistake, kind of. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's, uh, I mean, so, so they stuck you in left because there weren't enough outfielders or, or was that when you moved to center field? Yeah, I moved to center field. Yeah. When uh, in junior college, but I was in left in high school or my senior year of high school. So. Gotcha. <laughs> so who's, uh, who's taking credit now for turning you into a, a gold glove outfielder then? 
<laughs> I'd say it's probably my – oh, I don't know. I think it would probably be my JUCO coach. He taught me the most for the elf field, and it was pretty similar to my high school coach too. But he taught me mostly hitting, and I thank him for my hitting the most. But it was definitely my JUCO hitting coach as well. He was also our outfield coach, and, yeah, he taught me that a lot. Do you, you still hear his voice in your head when you're playing oh, yeah. outfield now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do the same some of the same drills here, so I love that. And it just reminds me of Juco, and they're great drills. So, yeah. You've got a lot of time to kill as an outfielder. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get a couple of couple of balls a game. Uh, yeah. What do you uh, What do you daydream about when you're standing out there in the outfield? Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I honestly don't even know. I try to stay as focused as possible, but I'm thinking about – honestly now that when I look back at games and stuff I think I'm mostly thinking about the game like where the situation we're in and maybe sometimes how tired my legs are just standing there but that's about it <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's that's why I usually see you get out of get out of fielding position and shake out a little bit yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that's funny no I've uh doing, doing games in the minors for a little bit I've heard guys say that they'll sing sometimes or uh, uh, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. what are you, what, what are you singing out there? What's your, what's your go-to jam? Oh, oh man. I know in junior college, I would sing fly me to the moon by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> I was just singing that today. <laughs> and so that, that, that's probably my go-to, but some days it's just random songs sometimes, and, but I don't sing too much anymore. <laughs> You're a Sinatra guy, huh? Yeah, he's pretty good. I, I don't listen to a lot of him, but I'm a big country fan, so I'll be singing country and uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to have a little baritone to sing Sinatra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm good. I just I just sing. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, is that what Judge walks up to? By the way, is that? Well, I don't even know what he walks up to. I feel like I feel like maybe he walks up to Sinatra. So. Oh, that's maybe, right curious maybe, now <laughs> maybe it's destiny that, that that's your guy <laughs> yeah. um well let's let's wrap with just um you know why you picked siu and you know the the whole process um mm -hmm. when, when you were considering schools you know what research had you done on siu and, and what stood out to you um i mean the baseball team in the past or like the recent past hadn't didn't have a great record but i came in for my visit and I met the coaches and all the players and I saw that they had, they were 20th, I think it was 20th in Juco recruiting. And that really sold, didn't sell, sell me, I would say, but it really helped sell me. And um, just the maturity of the team, I really liked. And I knew that, that they would be able to hit. I just kind of saw with the coaching and how they coached, I was like, this is going to be a good team. I guarantee that. And that's basically the reason I came here because there were other schools too, but they just didn't have the same coaching. Like Rhodes is an incredible coach. He's super smart. And um, yeah. What was your first impression of coach Rhodes? He's, he was quiet and, but he was so super, super nice. And I really liked him and I, that kind of, it's the same still. And yes. And I just knew he was a smart man too. He knows the game very well, especially even for being such a young guy too as a coach and then our pitching coach he he has got a really good track record that was I mean I'm not a pitcher but I knew that would be a huge thing for the pitching staff as well which would in uh, turn help the team uh, how'd they find out about you um I'm not sure exactly I think so there was a sophomore all-star game in Arizona and our coach coach um uh Nick Magnifico he, uh, he left uh, this fall, but right. uh, he recruited me. And so I think he came out to the sophomore all-star game. I honestly did a horrible during that whole thing. I don't know. I didn't expect to get any calls after that. And then he called me, got me on a visit. And yeah, he really recruited hard and he's a good recruiter too. <laughs> Had you ever heard about SIU before that? No, I didn't know it existed. <laughs> <laughs> so were you a little skeptical at first like like who who's this 
a little bit. I think I was more skeptical before my visit and stuff. And like, and once I got came on my visit and saw the coaches, met and talked to them in person and the players. And then I kind of, I was like, okay, this place, they know what they're doing and they're going to be good. So. Which one of the guys made the, the strongest first impression on you on your visit? I don't know, honestly. I, I can't really pick out any specific guys. I know who I was staying with because I was only there for, I don't even know how, I, maybe it might have been two days or something like that. But I think it might have been JT Weber. I don't know why he stuck out. I know he forgot who I was after this fall, <laughs> even though I stayed with him, but I don't know. He just stuck out. He looked like he's a big dude. And I was like, Oh, he's probably really good. Sure enough. He is good. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he must be the go-to guy to host recruits then. He, <laughs> yeah, I guess so, so, yeah. so many, he forgot who you were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's funny. It's funny. Uh, a lot of the guys have said they've been impressed with, with what SIU baseball has done with their video technology. What impressions uh, or, or what's impressed you about uh, just what you have access to and um, that side of things to get better? Oh, man. We have – I mean, we know what, who we're going to face before we face them. We know what they throw, when they throw it. We have scouting reports on these guys. It's really been crazy how much – like information we've had it's like i've faced the guy before already and i haven't even stepped in the box and i'm i'm already i'm ready to hit him already so and i think that's been a huge part of our success as well even though every other team does it Rhodes and the other coaches really know how to take everything from that and help us as much as possible how much is too much uh like what do you mean like like I, I feel like you kind of, you have so much information, right? So, mm -hmm. so how much information is too much and how much, uh, how do you, how do you find like the happy medium to, uh, to not cloud your mind, but to also right. be prepared? Uh, I don't think there is too much information in this. At least they haven't given us too much information. So I don't know what the limit would be on that. I think you just have to kind of go into it with an open mind too that it's not going to be exactly what they say, but it's going to be very close to what they say because the pitchers obviously change and every and other players change. So, yeah, I mean, you just got to go into it with an open mind and then too much information. There is no such thing as too much information then. Right. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. That sure is. <laughs> um, well, hey, man, congrats on uh, the good start. Uh, I know you said you're, you're working hard to stay hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hope, hope you and the team continue uh, the success you guys have had. Looking forward to seeing what you guys can do in the Valley. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. That's uh, that's the reigning Valley player of the week. Tristan Peters uh, hitting 467 overall coming off a 10 for 15 week. And the Salukis are 11 and 0. They've got Evansville this weekend. Thanks for listening. This has been another Saluki standard.